basic equations just as a refresher, so stay tuned because as we get to the end, they'll become a little more complex and involve some fractions and things like that, which people typically struggle with. Um, so here's our first equation. Let's remember the basics of solving an equation. We want to isolate the variable or get the variable by itself. So we have x to be all alone. So we need to move everything else to the other side of the equation. We have a minus 5, so to move that to the other side, we do the opposite and add 5 to both sides of the equation. We have to do it on both sides to keep the equation balanced. And that leaves us with just 6x on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, 5 plus 7 gives us 12. Now we have 6 times x, so the only thing we have left to get to 6 alone is 6 times x. The opposite would be dividing by 6, so we divide by 6. And we get x is equal to 12 divided by 6, or 2. Okay, so again, three basic equations. I'm going to start out e easy on you. <laughs> okay, here is a second example of solving an equation. So again, we have the basics. We want to get the x all alone. Uh, so first, we want to move that 8. It's a positive 8. So to move it to the opposite side, we do the opposite and subtract the 8 so that we get a 0 there. And we're left with negative 4x on the left side of the equation is equal to 12 minus 8 is 4 on the right-hand side. We're going to go ahead and now we have negative 4 times x, so to isolate that, we're going to do the opposite of multiplying by negative 4 and divide by both sides by negative 4. And we have our solution, x equals negative 1. Now, you can always check your answers to make sure they're the correct answer by plugging them back into the equation. For this one, it would look like this. We had 8 minus 4x equals 12. We want to know if we have the correct answer. We said that x was negative 1. So we would replace the x with a negative 1 and check to see if it makes the equation true or not. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. And so we ask, is 8 plus 4 12? Yes, it is. So we know we have the correct answer here. All right, here's an equation that takes it up a step. Um, lots of people are uncomfortable with fractions. Um, in this case, one thing you might want to do, rather than distributing into those parentheses, is multiply by a number to eliminate all the denominators. So let's look at what denominators we have. We have a denominator of 3 and a denominator of 6. So if we multiply by something that 6 and 3 will both go into so that they are both eliminated, then we will not have fractions anymore, and we will be able to complete the problem without dealing with common denominators and things like that. Notice that uh, 6, okay, 3 and 6 both go into 6, so that is what we are going to use. There are other methods to solve this equation, but this is the one we're going to use here. So I multiply each term. Now notice this is all multiplication here, this first term. So that is one term. And here is another term. And then on the other side of the equation, we have that 3 is also another term. So we're going to multiply this term by 6 and the 3 on the other side by 6. Again, the, those parentheses and the multiplication make those all one term. Well, what happens is when we go 6 times a third, um, 3 goes into 6 twice, and we're left with just 2 times x plus 6 here. Minus, we have that negative, 6 goes into 6 evenly, so we're left with just the 5 times x plus 12. And on the opposite side of the equation, 3 times 6 gives us 18. And then we just solve. We have a basic equation. So remember, your first step here would be to distribute to eliminate those parentheses. 2 times x gives me 2x, and 2 times 6 is 12. The second set of parentheses, negative 5 times x is a negative 5x, and negative 5 times 12 is a negative 60. Make sure you watch your signs there. It's easy to mess those up. We combine our like terms, because we have x in more than one place on this left-hand side. A 2x and a negative 5x gives me a negative 3x, and a 12 and a negative 60, when I put those together, I get negative 48, still equal to 18. We're going to solve the equation, so we need to isolate the x. 
going to add 48 to both sides. And we get negative 3x is equal to 66. And our last step would be to divide both sides by negative 3. And there we have our solution. So we get x is equal to 66 divided by negative 3 is negative 22. And again, we could always go back up to our original equation and check our answer. Okay, I have two more examples here, both dealing with fractions, so that we can work with those a little bit. Again, notice each here we have multiple fractions. And again, one way to get rid of those fractions is to multiply by uh, the least common multiple. So something that 4 and 2 would both divide into evenly, 4 would work in this case. You want to then be careful you multiply each term by 4. Okay, so we're going to multiply 1 half by 4. Sorry, I'm having issues with my pen. <laughs> okay, and the next fraction by 4, this x on the opposite side of the equation times 4, these pluses and minuses separate into separate terms. And 3 halves we're going to multiply by 4. Let's do some simplification here, because that's why we multiplied was to eliminate these denominators, and they should all eliminate. A 2 goes into 4 twice, so we're left with just 2 times 1 here for our first term, plus 4 goes into 4 evenly, so we just have our 2x there, equals 4x, and then here 2 goes into 4 2 times, so we're left with 2 times 3 on that last term. Let's simplify that a little bit, do all of the multiplication. So we have 2 plus 2x equals 4x plus 6. And now we want to solve that equation for x. So we need to move all the x's to the same side of the equation. So you can do it either way, but I'm going to move the 2x. It was a positive 2x. Let's subtract 2x from both sides. I get just 2 on the left-hand side equals 4 minus 2x gives me a positive 2x plus 6. Now we want to isolate the x now that we have them all together. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of this equation. And I get negative 4 equals 2x. The last thing I have left to do is divide both sides by 2. And I am finished. Again, you may want to take that this answer of x equals negative 2 and plug it back into the original equation to make sure that it is a solution. I have done that, and it is a correct solution of this problem. All right, here is our last example for these basic linear equations. Notice again I have fractions, and I could eliminate that by multiplying everything by something that 5 and 2 both divide into, say, 10. We could also do cross multiplication here, if you remember that term, because I have just a one whole fraction equal to another entire fraction. Okay, so whichever way you choose, um, we could do it the same way we've done the others. Notice that's one single term there, because it's all in one fraction, and one single term here. Again, I use 10, because 2 and 5 will both divide into that evenly. 5 goes into 10 twice, and 2 goes into 10 five times on this side. So I am left with 2 times 84 plus 3x on the left-hand side equals 5 times 2x minus 3 on the right-hand side. Do not forget your parentheses there so that when you multiply, you multiply by both terms. So I have uh, 2 times 84 is 168 plus 2 times 3x gives me 6x. On the other side, 2 times 5 is a 10x, and 5 times negative 3 is 15. We proceed to solve. We gather the x's to the same side, do our same old song and dance. I subtract 6x from both sides. You can move the 10 if you choose, but I just chose to do it this way. 10 minus 6 gives me a 4x, and I have minus 15. 
and now we isolate our X. Add 15 to both sides, and that gives me 4X on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, I'm left with 183. My last step is to divide both sides by 4, and I will be done. And when I do 183 divided by 4, it does not go evenly. It goes 45 times with a remainder of 3. So my final answer is x equals 45 and 3 fourths. And again, you can take that back to original and check it just to make sure it's the correct solution, but it is. So here are some basic solving equations in case you needed a brush up.